to go through some more video stuff, I guess. Because I, I have so many videos I have to go through. It's ridiculous. So let me go ahead and switch it on over. Oh god. Pages and pages and pages. Ugh. You gotta understand too. A lot of my old builds, they just they just don't exist anymore, right? Because a lot of my builds, they dealt with the meta at the time. Um, like Grenadier, uh, Grenadier, I built it to blow up the um, glass cannons of 1.6. And then when Stamina came back with uh, Classified, Predator, and um, D3, and Striker, the 9k Stamina builds. Once Stamina came back, the um, my Grenadier build stopped functioning altogether because all of these DPS builds became Bruiser builds again. So... It just became a bruiser game once more. So I had to shelf a lot of those those types of builds. Um, as you couldn't just <laughs> wipe a whole team in one explosion with three, you know, two skills and a grenade anymore. You had to uh, do a little bit more than that. Um, so where are we at? We were on the third page. Uh, we had gotten to yeah, Nomad, Texas Toast. Yes, yeah, so I think we were skipping Creature Preacher because this was Hunter's Faith, the old one. This was the tanky Hunter's Faith. I uh, I don't think I'm gonna find any highlights in there. Um. Hunter's Faith, Mobile Cover, Smart Cover. That was fun. That was such a tanky build. You would just face tank people on Mobile Cover and Smart Cover with Hunter's Faith. I still think that was a really strong build. Um, let's see. Sentry's Calling me. Sentry's Call was a fun one. It lasted for a long time. Oh, it looks like I've got a, uh... What do we got? Rope cut. Submit. Mobile fortress. Let's see what Not we the got. the covered fortress, but the mobile fortress. That is... Ballistic shield. A la assault shield. With the... Oh, a second. Turret taser mod. Let's give it a go. Oh, it sounds like he's downstairs. He left. Did he leave? It'd be a shame if he left. Damn shame, isn't it? I'll fight him up here too. See, people were still leaving their ropes at this point, unattended. We're talking like one point, what is this, 1.7? Still, still people were leaving their ropes unattended. But I shouldn't, I should just run, because that looks like a full group. <laughs> looks like a full group. Oh, and this is the uh, Sentry's Call pistol build. Lots of damage, dude. Oh, 
my god, that lag. Just whipping it. Pistol whipping it. Ah, uh, that oh, laser. Oh boy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that worked. Look how fucking, like, it's a yeah, laser should, beam. Uh, cooldown reduction or something on headshot kills. That might be something worth investing in. Like a damn laser beam, dude. Oh so the, boy. So the old yeah. meta, the old meta this build is based off of is a sniper shotgun setup, bruiser build from like 1.3, and then the only difference here being okay. that we're using a pistol build now, with that that mechanic, the shotgun sniper as a backup. All right. So we drop the taser on the corner so that if they make that turn, they they got to face that turret at some point. Ah! Ooh, I got jumped from behind. On but I wasn't too bad. I could fight a lot ability. of people and still make it. But I had just made this build again. This was uh, my sentries. Oh, goodness. That was a good time to jump in. Let's see if I can find something worth highlighting. Should be in this uh, description here. Ambushing somebody. Yeah, it's uh, one two matches, because one match is 50%. I was talking about survival. And that's your weekly, too. So Ooh, I'm trying a revolver right now. Then. I think this is the Rhino. Yeah, see, I thought exotics were just like a random... Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Or just a random thing. So that's a six-shot... <laughs> a six-shot pistol. Heavy damage. But it doesn't shoot like a laser, right? It, it, it's got... It bucks. But if you're gonna do like pistol damage, I mean, hey. Oh, you did them like that. There huh? you go. I guess that was that was the ambush. Uh, rope cut two v three. That might be fun. All right, so it's departing. So we gotta cut this rope. Man, I went. I threw the turret. They saw me coming. How are they doing? Is that a tack link? What are they tack linking? All right, so we're back to like the. Uh, Seeker mines, man. Everybody was running them. They're brutal. Oh, I don't think we actually get to the rope. That sucks. box wake me up inside ooh they're pushing EMPs hell yeah dude look at this game being played look at all the, the different the wide variety of skills people were using back then Damn. Push. 
pushing up. Tase his ass. Get him. Uh. These, this was back when the turrets the would, uh... <laughs> uh, I've been experiencing errors mm -hmm. all over the place, Rage. Uh, I think it's easy to miss anything right now. I can't even get into the division right now. It keeps giving me deltas and mics, dude. I can't get on the server right now, so this is what I'm doing. I'm just kind of uh, watching some old stuff again. I was doing this on YouTube uh, the a little earlier, Run to the talking tunnel. about uh, how this applies to the Division Two. Um, but you know, like this is this era w looks a lot like what the Division Two looks like PvP wise, right? Lots of glass cannons. The, um... Lots of, uh... Strong, high-powered skills. Like, this, like the Airburst Seeker in this era was, like, wiping out whole teams. It was fucking bonkers. But, um... Let me see. Uh, 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 yeah, I guess nothing really overly exciting here. Here's an... We can stop him here if you want. Sentry's call. Where were we? We were there. S stream workshop sentries. This one's got more views. Guide. It's got another guide in it. So at least it's easier to look yeah, through. Yeah, rope miss, rope miss. But it might be a good fight. 2v3. Ooh, we had an opportunity here. Oh, it's a 3v3. Blue proc. The other thing, too, is that you can make even a crappy shield live pretty long with a blue proc. Like, uh, a lot of these shields I'm using are only, like, 4K, um, 4K shields. Ooh, you, <laughs> you missed them. <laughs> that gentleman did not get picked up by his green. Oh my god. That damage, dude. Get shredded. <laughs> hey, bud, you on your little lonesome? Oh, fuck. Oh, cool. oh damn. That sucks for them. Yep. Damn. I'm glad they got their stuff out. Agent, I am inbound on your position. Damn. Yeah, I think that was their healer. Oh, and I put it in the, uh... He didn't do shit for damage, and he had no other shit. I guess this one was good, too. Watch out, Rogue! Watch out, Rogue! Watch out! <laughs> Here they come! See, this is going to be the occupied dark zone. When they, when people tell you uh, which, they're like, oh yeah, the friendly zone and the actual dark zone. Occupied dark zone. This is Rogue 1.0. For anyone who didn't experience it. There you go, big firm. Where you would just shoot somebody and you would go rogue. So, this was a very, hey, uh, here, guys. a very weird time in the game. And this was the, the strong majority of the, the game, was uh, this Rogue 1.0 mechanic. You had to be careful when you shot, when you used uh, skills like the Seeker Mine. Any AoE sort of ability, uh, you would easily proc Accidental Rogue. Uh, and I used that to my advantage. I would scream Accidental Rogue and people would uh, not shoot me. 
uh, because I was using things like Seekers or whatever, and they would, uh, they would decide not to shoot. And it's like, God, you guys are, just kill me. What's wrong with you? I get, you know, a free shot on people because they, they have to second guess whether you're gonna be coming from legitimately not a threat or so if you're an so actual rogue. Over there. Because they have it in their head that there's such a thing as an accidental rogue. There is no such thing as an accidental rogue. The reason you got shot was because you're in my He's way. I'm shooting you in the back. I need to kill the rogues that are in front of you. Oftentimes a manhunt. I don't want to share. I'm not here to share that kill with you. Yeah, pace those uh, pulses, okay, guys? Of course they <laughs> fell for it. <laughs> what do <are> you... <laughs> it was common out, courtesy so not to massive. kill a accidental rogue. You know, a low-timer person. You know, a, no, a, 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 a zero status, if you will. You know, a, a 60 second timer person. Because so they didn't mean it. It was an accident. Side. And you're not really going to get. Uh, a, the only thing you're so going to get is a rogue kill, but it's not a good rogue kill. You don't get any points. You don't get. Like, it's hardly anything. If they have stuff on them, it's worth it because they'll drop, you know, four items instead of three. But other than that, like, there's no real point in killing somebody who isn't a manhunt. No, or at least status, right? You gotta have a status on you. God, whip it good. Oh, -na 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 -na. oh my god. Get whipped with the pistol. Shit. So good. It's just a game, my dude. Me from a year ago isn't wrong. It is just a game. Oh, look at this. Yo, there's some reclaimer going on there. You can tell because of the box. Get in there. Push. Hip fire. Hip fire. Uh <laughs> I always sing to people. It's been a thing. What else is good out here? This one. So apparently I'd seen this one. I already marked what I wanted to use here. So we'll just look at what's out here. Ooh, we're they're gonna whip them. They're underground. There's four of them. Pistol whip. Guard me. So this is a mechanic that's also changing in the next game. Is this rope cut mechanic? You actually have to complete the rope cut. You actually have to complete your naughty action to get the full rogue status. Because if you're just cutting a rope and you don't actually finish cutting it, did you really accomplish anything? The answer is no. It's the same deal when you're uh, picking the locks, right? You're exposed while you're picking the lock because you're in the middle of doing something bad, but until you've completed the act, you actually haven't done anything naughty. Turn, Iceman. Ah. The whip. Da -na 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 -na. Grab that whip. His body's... Hold on a second. Oh, that guy. Where's his friend? Oh, he's coming up the ladder. That's where he's coming from. Hold up. Here they come. Don't do it. You got three dudes standing right there. This is not the this is not the play, right? Oh. That is not the play. Anytime you gotta make a jump, anytime you gotta like like what is this? Dropping in front of three dudes? Davy boy. Member of your team has disavowed the These Brazilian dudes, man, they didn't have like any any sense of like self preservation. They would just just fucking. They, that's why they would multi group. I only know how to get here. They would just throw themselves at you until you died. 
like eight eight Brazilians with no sense of uh, uh, restraint or strategy. They just run at you until like you died. It was a it was a common Brazilian strategy at the time. Cool. Uh, let's see. I don't think I really need any of this stuff. This is all Sentry's call stuff. Firecrest. All right. This was the music video one. I think we already covered that. That's done. Um, see, all these things are semi-locked up. Search for Texas Toast. All right, so here we go. Finally, 1.7 drops. What is a mule? This is where I'm trying to figure out the, the language and how I want to describe to people how to betray each other. Because, my god, the... The betrayal mechanics in this game, the trust mechanics, if you wanted to farm efficiently, ever, because there was this big debate, right? Where do you go to farm? And pe there was, um, the docks had come out, so everyone was like, oh yeah, go to these docks and spend all right. these, no these PVE points out. that you got. Spend them all on this one box together, and then leave the, the event and go back in over and over again. That's efficient. That's high efficient. Then there was this other group that was like, "Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna have you uh, farm the DZ efficiently. We'll give you efficient farming routes." Or there were these other groups that are like, "No, no, no. You got to do this one mission. This one mission is really efficient." It's like, no, and then I was sitting in here in the dark zone. I'm like, you know what? As they Everybody's say, wrong. Uh, yar har fiddle dee dee. Being a pirate is alright to be. He's right. Um. <laughs> that is. That so. Now entering a contaminated okay. area. So what I was about was figuring out how to explain how to rob people uh, and I needed language to describe it efficiently I ended up going with this old way of describing a beast of burden uh, a way to, because the, 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 the person who's going to be carrying your stuff, you have to treat them with respect. You have to treat them nicely. And you have to have an interest in their survival up to a point, right? Because they are carrying your stuff. That's the mentality you have to have going into it right? You have to care for this person. Oh no. That's... That's kind of rough. <sighs> so, I wanted to give you that mentality, right? of how to approach a person. This person is your mule. You know, be nice. They will carry things for you. I was like, okay, that's an easy way to describe the situation, the relationship you have with these other players. It also dehumanizes them a little bit, right? If you describe the other players that you're having carry your stuff as mules, then you don't feel as bad when you betray them. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to set up that barrier so that when you have to betray someone's trust, you don't feel as bad because you're human as well. 
Like, uh, it may be a game mechanic to, to betray someone for their stuff, but at the end of the day, it's a moral dilemma. Am I mute? I don't think I'm mute. Am I mute? My voice? Man, I should have been watching that. I was looking northeast. Am I mute? Hello? I shouldn't be mute right now. Oh, I'm I'm mule. <laughs> I'm am sorry. It's a, the mule. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it's so far away. Let me bring the the text closer. Let me increase your size. I have you're on a different screen right now because I'm I have a different setup for watching this shit and for editing. You're, I'm sorry. Please don't shoot me. Stop shooting me. My, my. Yeah, no, it's a different language. So this was, at this time, I was trying to develop a different language for uh, dealing with people. So mules. That was what I decided on was mules. Dehumanizes, and it sets it up so that you have to treat them nicely anyways. Thank you for stopping in and shoot me. Thank you. I appreciate it, dude. Let me see. I kind of like that part. So that's at what, like, uh, 22? I'll take a 22.30. 22.30, please, for the highlight. Administrator. 22.30. Uh, high jack with century shield cool um so i was developing this this language about it <laughs> kill him and then we'll be together oh god I had him kill his teammate. That's the one, baby. It's like, yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, is this is this close enough? Is this pretty close? Does that count? What the fuck? What did I walk in on? I believe in it. I think he was asking for a favor. What did, what am I watching? What happened here? Okay. See, this is VoIP. This is what VoIP oh, allows. Interactions oh, no. between people uh, in a place where you should not be uh, getting within five feet of each team. other. You can do it. I in oh, Bravo Company coming in hot, getting wrecked. The usual. Oh, my God. Those were the good old days. <laughs> the time to kill is remarkably similar to uh, Division 2. Just saying. Back when people were running these glass cannon builds, this is this is what it was. Uh... There's concern that VoIP reveals too much about your. I like her. She's ambitious. Your sit your situation, right? People could, if they wanted to, they oh the betrayal. <laughs> the betrayal. I didn't want them taking your manhunt. I didn't want them taking your manhunt. Keeping it in the family. Do you remember me? Oh, there's senpai. Yep. <laughs> oh no. I think I'm gonna end up betraying this guy in the end. Oh no. Yeah, I'm aware of that too. Uh, dude, it's just people are really suspicious of each other, 
and they they feel as if they need a VPN to protect themselves from hackers. Uh, I guess there was a thing on console, right? Where people would add you to their squad. And because of the way uh, the network uh, VoIP system worked on console, they could boot you from the server once you were on their, their squad. I don't use a VPN either. Uh, it would cause la you you would cause yourself latency issues uh, automatically using the VPN. Um, also, I don't have money, so I don't I don't really. Oh, I got you. But uh, uh, the the issue being that I guess already people have been abusing the VoIP system to an extent, not on PC, but on console. And I can imagine people using it nefariously on uh, PC as well. But I don't, I don't worry about that. I feel like if you're a streamer, perhaps, and you have a lot of viewers and there's a lot at stake and you're constantly being harassed, like Example, for instance, Example has had I, I think he mentioned uh, at one point during a stream that he had lost like two routers or something like that to um, to some sort of uh, internet attacks. You know, like they fried him. But uh, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's a security threat, right? So there's there's a reason why people are not thrilled with it. And I totally get it. I understand. Um, it just, VoIP, it's a proximity chat in the game. And I utilize it in the game to get other people to do things for me. Whether I'm rogue or I'm not rogue, you know, there's there's situations where like I am of the rogue status, and I can convince them that I am not a threat in that moment, and they won't shoot me. And that's a win in my book. That's an actual play, a strategy for me. Even if I can get them to not shoot me for a, a second. Um, that's, that's what I, that counts as, like, a victory in my book. So, like, VoIP, look, look at these one is none procs. What the fuck? Give me, give me one is none for, uh, 500 Trebek. Thank you. Uh, not what you meant. Not the, so it's not the security thing. What is it? Oh, not <laughs> not being active. Uh, <laughs> it was a worry. Uh, PSI. It was a worry uh, that <laughs> there was a rumor going around. <laughs> There's a slight rumor uh, going around. Uh, Marco was actually at fault a little bit for this. Uh, that uh, the VoIP proxy chat was going to disappear. Um, in the Division 2, in the in the DZ. But it was actually just a rework uh, for when you're rogue. It was just a misinterpretation of what was, was happening. Um, apparently the way the system works is that when you disavow rogue, you get dumped into a private channel so that the non-rogue players cannot hear you. Right? So, the idea being that you no longer need something like Discord, which is a huge security threat. Uh, you, do, you don't need to run Discord to um, uh, uh, to efficiently communicate in the dark zone anymore without other people hearing you. So that was, that was what they had changed. 
but uh, there was just a vicious rumor going around saying that VoIP was dead. Uh, but it, it is... <laughs> oh, no! The Rogue 2.0? I've been screaming Accidental Rogue and Rogue 2.0, and it works. I have evidence just, like, uh, of a week ago of it working. It works just fine right now, even in Rogue 2.0, where you cannot go Accidental Rogue. It's impossible. Oh, even, uh, no, it's still. Hey, uh, there's the Occupied Dark Zone. There you go, thank you. And there's, um, also, the, even in the normal, in the, um, uh, normalized DZs, uh, there's reasons where when you're, uh, unlocking boxes, you don't actually, you're not pursuing PvP, you're just pursuing the triangulation. It actually behooves you to avoid combat. So sometimes people will avoid confronting you. If there's a PvE player who discovers a, uh, a SV, or what are they called? The, the white rogue status, right? Where it's not a disavowed rogue. It might behoove them just to ignore that rogue because that rogue, when they're triangulating, they actually don't want to kill anybody. Because if they kill anybody, they lose the triangulation. So there's a bit of a mind fuckery going on there, a mind game. Yeah, that's with Discord. When it comes to Discord, there's um. Discord is quite the service at the moment, and it's hard to justify getting rid of it. Uh, but as far as what it does, it records your voice conversations and your texts and your all sorts of stuff. Like, it's, it's immensely invasive as a program. So once we find a competitor that does it better... Uh, you, you sure as hell know we're getting out of there. Not to mention all the controversy surrounding it right now with all the pedophilia rings and the uh, nonsense. Uh, Discord's a mess right now. They're they're about they're about to be in a bunch of lawsuits. <laughs> no, I knew you were joking. Don't get, you don't have to even JK. You sh honestly, the fact that you had to JK, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that there was a need for you to have to type that out. The the absurdity of the first statement should have been sufficient. Good lord. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh my god. Yeah, dude. It's fucked. Oh, here we go. What's this? You told me we were gonna get the rope. You missed the rope. You missed it. Departing, departing. Yeah, that's what I told him. Man, I love VoIP. I love the fact that they don't have to be in your party and you could communicate with them. I got to know so many people. I I wasn't invited to a lot of parties. <laughs> but a lot of people knew me. You know, I got to know a lot of people. Uh, and it's just because you hang out in the VoIP. Oh, there's Nep Will Nep. Hey, dumb boys. <laughs> Defcon, the net boys. Yeah, 1.7 was sick. I just got through watching the 1.6 stuff. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. Hey, in 1.7, I actually did bounce around a lot of squads because I was a god back then. Let's not get it twisted. Once I had Lone Star and the Boom Tube, and then I had Firecrest, I had Sentry's Call, I had Nomad shield builds, all of them shield builds, people loved me. They loved to have me around because I was a winner. 
I was hard to get along with because of, uh, you know, some of the nefarious stuff, but people would put up with it because I put up the numbers, right? So don't, don't get it twisted, Rage Racer. I was good back then. I was somebody. <laughs> it took me a minute to get there, though. Uh, I think it was like a month and a half in until uh, after they released the full classified gear for Lone Star before I actually got the last piece. I think it was like a knee pad. I had five pieces for the longest time. And I finally got it. I don't think there's really anything else here. I think it's just that one highlight. One sentry's call highlight that I want. The rest of this can shove it. Pop lock and drop it. Oh, this was back when the hurricane was happening. Hey, Joker. So I was about to be off work for a while. Get a neps. Here, we'll just uh, we'll leave the comment. Oh, the comments in there. There we go. Boom. And then all I do is I go over here. Uh, highlight, save change. I've got like a private listing. I'm just going through each fucking video. Oh, this is when I was talking. Oh yeah. Dude, I have an eye for the fucking future, dude. When I see updates and stuff, I know what I'm fucking talking about. That's why I'm telling you, you need to listen to me when I'm telling you about this clan shit for the, uh, for Division 2. For, uh, competitive PvP and shit. I think it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, dude. Like, I think PvP is gonna be really good in Division 2. It's just we gotta wait a bit. How's it going, Joker? I think I already said hi, but I wanted to make sure I said hi again. I got sidetracked. But this is like, we're in the middle of 1.7. And they're talking about patch 1.8. And I'm, I'm already telling people about how important 4v4s are going to be. How it's going to change from the solo striker bullshit that people have been... Uh, <laughs> I can't get in the game, Joker. I literally can't get in the game. It's nothing but mics and deltas. I tried for like 30 minutes straight. It won't let me in. So I'm doing this. I'm trying to be productive right now. I'm trying to find some highlights for, uh... <laughs> yeah, Solo Striker came in 1.8. But there were still Strikers that were out there. There were four-piece Strikers that were going hard. I don't know if you ever ran into Elite Dark Zone. He was going fucking hard in the paint. Um, he, uh, before they released, uh, this area up here, the, um... The, uh... 8 and 9, 7, 8 and 9. He was in DZ6 just fucking destroying people um, on his four-piece striker. And he and he maintained that uh, up until um, the six-piece came out. And then uh, he disappeared on me. I lost track of him. I think he just got bored of the game or something. Um, but yeah... There were a lot of pioneers in that gear set because it's always been good. Always. It's just people didn't... It wasn't overpowered until the six-piece came out. Oh, this is the Nomad shield. Yeah, you were on the four-piece. Four-piece should still be good. I know that they nerfed the um, six-piece, but for any any sort of uh, four-piece should get the job done. 
um, refreshed mask or even like an overheal vigorous chest piece. Just enjoying that health regen, dude. Or not the health regen, the uh, the stacks. Anything that lets you stack. Yeah, uh, it's probably comparable to a lot of the Hexo builds and about how hard it is to run right now. Because you still lose stacks like crazy. It, uh, it, it drains. Because it, it still has the same uh, drain as the six piece, right? It's still the two stacks per second or something like that. And there you go. I can imagine it's still a pain in the ass. It's just you don't get the uh, the healing stacks. That's not bad. Nope. Oh, there we go. Kick flip. Remove from group. Standing still. Grenade. Double shot. Espresso. Oh, I missed the second headshot. This was easy. This was. It was so easy to kick flip people. Triple shot. There's a one is none proc in there. Nothing to it, dude. Still have my nomad proc. Points for uh, hijack. Just doubled my farm. Two per shot missed. Yeah, no, it's brutal. So you got to be essentially in the responsive range, stacking with a showstopper. And then uh, using like a Lavoa or a uh, lightweight M4 at anything outside of 10 meters, you're just fucked. It's just a very limited build now. Like, the striker used to be you could use just about anything because of the way the stacks worked. Oh, I gotcha. It just didn't stack. So you never really got to feel the mechanic because everybody just died. I believe it. So what is this? This is... Fifteen. Fifteen minutes. I'm going to go fight those guys in a second on there. So highlight. Fifteen. Zero, zero. Kick. Flip. With Nomad Shield. And then uh, you see the whole rest of the map gets unused. Yeah, dude, 1.7. Well, here's here's the combination of things that made 1.7 amazing, right? So, like, they were just starting to introduce classifieds, right? Because 1.7 was when I was starting to put together my uh, my boom tube. I remember that much. The five and six piece Lone Star. So classifieds just got introduced. So the looting side of things, the motivation for people to loot was huge. People wanted gear. and They wanted it bad. And then additionally... Um, because they had just changed everything so drastically by introducing those five and six pieces, people didn't know what to make yet. Just everything had been shifted. It jostled so ever so slightly so that builds that were working in 1.6, this like glass cannony uh, uh, healing DP <laughs> healing DPS uh, uh, style glass cannon uh, 
fight no longer was enough. It had to change. And people weren't changing fast enough with the times. It was just like the fucking Wild West. It was, it was, it was so good. Who do we got? We got the Darth Clan. Oh my god, I don't even remember these guys. I don't think they're around anymore. Oh, I'm making fun of these guys. Hold on a second. What? Let me, see, let me listen to this. I got some shit to tell these people. Why is this so loud in my room? Oh, they're on my right. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, there's, the, there's Will Cuba. Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was essentially what it was. Adept was still good. Look at this shit. Look at this strategy. Does it look familiar? Uh oh, he's down. Pick him up. The construction strats. Nothing changes. Ah, I just fucking proc. He's got to reclaim twice. That shit. Had the nomad and the uh, green proc <laughs> that everybody wiped because they had to focus on me. <laughs> Back when you had to have, uh, oh, who did I just kill? Fear? Aw, oh, fear, no. How did, what did I do to fear? No, fear, no, don't stand there. I'm a good teammate. <laughs> affiliation has been disavowed for now mark is rogue my apologies to fear I was a bastard back then <laughs> I'm a good teammate I'm a please good believe. teammate please believe me now this is called kiting I am taking oh my god I was good once, please believe me. Medkit. There it is. I think this is a refreshed mask nomad too. He's less friendly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not as good as I used to be back then. Like this this build was overpowered. Let's let's be real. Shields used to be absurd. Absurd. Wow. Uh, I don't know if they fixed that. Uh 1.7 did they fix? Cuz I I was used to being able to grenade my own shield in 1.6. So I might not have adjusted yet. Yeah, I can hurt myself. So I'm not used to it yet, right? I'm used to that strategy of just grenading directly in front of myself. That's a strategy from 1.6. 1.6, you didn't actually damage your own shield. Um, you could just grenade direct in front with a frag, and as long as you were looking at your own frag grenade, it, it wouldn't take damage. So... You can't blame me for, you know, maintaining that strategy. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, man. Is that all you do is just hide behind your fucking gadgets? Like, you're goddamn garbage, my dude. Oh, like, no. The fuck? Yes. You got me. Hey, you, pick me up. He was correct. You that was what I did. Hey, pick me up, my dude. dude. Like, get the fuck out of here. I'll dance. Pick me up. <laughs> he was, he was correct. I still do. Oh, I still hide behind my smart cover and my taser turrets. <laughs> He's not wrong. What do you want from me? <laughs> it's in the game. <laughs> you saw how mad he was. <laughs> All you gotta do is run around a little bit. <laughs> Dude, it's hot fucking this. Oh, these builds were great. Uh, 
fighting a nomad that has a shield and a taser. You know how infuriating that well, could have been? There's a uh, drop just north of us. Because you would kill the shield, you'd be getting tasered, he'd run around long enough for the shield to come back. Hopefully you killed his first life in that amount of time. God forbid you didn't. He's got a health on kill so that any NPCs nearby, he's regaining the health that you took off of him when his shield is down. Ugh. I'm recreating okay. that. Drop is being I'm gonna nearby. make that Nomad for 1.8.3. I'm gonna play with it until, um, Division 2 comes out. And I'm just gonna be a pain in everybody's ass. <laughs> It's so fucking stupid, dude. Oh. Your team is down. So good. Assistance. Here's another guy I'm gonna flip. I don't know. I don't recognize his name, so I know I'm. That's a mule. That's a mule, dude. Swamp. The swamp, Z swamp. Here. We're at an extraction. The amount of damage, Dude's getting no flipped. What, yeah. Arriving. Incoming kick flip, fellas. Double your farm. And this is the type of kick flip you can perform still in DZ2. Because uh, they actually changed the kick flip mechanic in the next game. Uh, they fucked me up, dude. They fucked me up. Good and hard. They introduced the vote mechanic. Um, bring it on board. in Division 1 for matchmade teams and they realized that was insufficient because people like me were adding people in the dark zone to get around the um, to get around the voting mechanic, right? Because I didn't want to vote to kick people I would add them within the dark zone instead of through the matchmaking system. So what they did for Division Two is they've uh, they've implemented what they've done is they've implemented a um, a vote system on teams that that are developed within the dark zone as if it was a matchmade system. So. Now I gotta play it like I'm the Joker, right? I gotta convince people to vote each other out before I start kick flipping. If I'm gonna do a groups bigger than, t uh, you know, myself and another person, or I'm gonna have to just start leaving the group and doing a one versus a number greater than one. Uh, it's gonna get. Kick flips are just going to be much more technical, deceitful, and difficult in the next game. But I've pulled off those type of kick flips already in Division 1, so I'm confident I can still pull them off in Division 2. It's just that um, it's a very technical type of kick flip, it's very demanding. Otherwise, you have to play a very uh, hard. Like one versus two, one versus three. It's unfortunate. I can't um, but at the very well. least, you'll play it from an ambush position within the group. You can position yourself so where the NPCs are on one side and you are on the other. And you can flank, right? So they have to decide are you the threat or are the NPCs the threat? And the NPCs hit hard enough now. Where if you can put some sort of suppressor or something, make yourself less of a threat. Because in this game you had threat, right? I could put a, um, what is it, a, uh, a, su a suppressor instead of a, a loud vent break. A loud vent break fucked me up in this game. Oh my god, they're all murdering me. They both jumped up there and gave it, three of them gave it to me. There you go. But the, um... The suppressor made it so that the NPCs would fight me less than the DPS classes uh, that I would be ambushing.
So I would always have the NPCs on my side in fights. If, the, if there's a mechanic like that in the next game, I didn't see that. I didn't see any threat management system. Um, so that's kind of concerning for me as a solo player. If I can't manage the threat of the NPCs and kind of focus it on the other players, that's going to be a problem for me. Um, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. Because um, I had things like smart cover. Well, smart cover could also, uh, the concealer, uh, it also made it less likely for the NPCs to fight you because it reduced your threat as well. Uh, things like that. Like, they, they don't understand, like, a lot of these mechanics that people like to overlook, I used a lot of them. A lot of these mechanics are useful if you took the time to learn them. Everyone kept putting on these loud vent breaks, and they're like, why am I being shot by the NPCs? You're using a loud vent break. Put, put on the suppressor equivalent, please. That still does crit damage. But uh, Division 2, it's uh, I think it's going to be missing that. I think, it's, uh, I think they've removed that mechanic, so... I mean, I might be wrong, but I didn't see it in the mods. I saw stability, accuracy, uh, damage, but no threat. This dude's getting rocked. Oh, sorry, cowboy. Ah, I don't know. Could be. Yeah, we didn't have any look at the gear mods, but the thing is at the uh, the end game, you gotta look at some of the gear mods. A lot of them had to do with, like, um, resists and cooldowns and stuff, so, like, I don't think that has as much to do with um, threat as, as you might hope. I don't know. MC gloves. I won't make that one. Go on, go back. Warning. Uh oh. No one is none. Get the one is none. Come on, bud. Get them brutal headshots. Ooh, he's he's hiding. Body. God, all these rope cuts. Got a really good head. This is not delivering it through the headphones. <laughs> Clean the <laughs> pick up the phones. Yeah, I I hadn't cleaned up my uh, my map yet. This was one point six, I guess. One point seven. I hadn't picked up all the objectives. Because you got to remember, they just released a whole bunch of uh, new objectives with uh, the new map release. The northern map stuff. So there are a bunch of extra things that I hadn't done yet. Because I just, I stopped caring. Right? So like this whole new area up here, because 7, 8, and 9. I was just like, man, fuck all that. I ain't going to fucking waste of my time getting those phones. Catch him. I know, a shield and a turret. I am a pansy. Oh, 
dead. Murdered. Murdered. You wanna talk some shit in a 2v1? Ooh, you got him. Did you kill the rogue? Nicely done. Hey, wait. Wait, I won't use the shield. I promise. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a lot of uh, easy experience, easy gear. Yeah, the, they, people, un and the thing is, it's a lot of lore. I really enjoy the lore, the story, the side stories. Uh, the underground story, it really fucked up stuff down there, dude. You get photos, you get all sorts of goodies. If you really want to just enjoy the game, the extra content, um, you want to listen to the audio files and stuff, and just get an idea, immerse yourself in the game. Oh, it's fucking wonderful. I really... I know a lot of people seem to only play this for the gunplay and the whatever. For some reason, I don't know. The DZ is, I guess, unique in, in a lot of ways. So, you know, people pursue it. But the Division, like, it's a really good story. I, I enjoyed it. It was good. It's very compelling. Lots of fucked up shit's going on, and you gotta, you gotta do what you can do, and there's people trying to survive, and different motivations and weird shit happens. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's nice. It's nice, dude. I'm just saying. I feel like people need to appreciate it for more than what it is. More than what they uh, give it credit for, you know what I mean? The green crop. When you try to do Oh, I'm on a fire crest now, I think. I'm <laughs> just sitting up here talking shit. Nasty squiggle, baby. Yeah, baby. I got that nasty squiggle, too. Let me show you. Yeah, baby, yeah. Let me show you. Oh, no. The Riker squiggles. Yeah, the giant pizza delivery. It keeps it hot and ready, that's all. That's what it's for. Well, that's it for now, I guess. I don't really see. Yeah. <laughs> Leave the pizza delivery bag alone, okay? You did good. But yeah, I was supposed to be talking about this. All the way back here. September 6th, 2017. Talking about oh, 1.8. And how important 4v4s were going to be. I'm like a goddamn prophet. Innovative. I'm telling you, when I look at mechanics, when I look at what's coming down the pipe, I can tell you what's going to happen. Everybody tells you they see it coming, but I tell you, I see it better. Here's a highlight. Highlight, save. I saw that shit coming from a mile away, I tell you what. I saw the game changing. I saw it with my eyes. Chat strategies. <laughs> More mules and fools. Uh, yeah, I'll just look through this one quick. This is only an hour one, so I'm just going to fly through it. Probably nothing in here. And then there's like a whole like 12, 15 videos in here that I'm going to skip because it's like back when I had my surgery and I was playing XCOM. Though I do recommend you take a look at XCOM if you have it and you have a, a taste for um, turn-based strategy. Because it's a cover-based turn-based strategy. And it should help you get into the mindset of how you should strategically approach... Hold 
want a second. I want to. I want to see this fight. This Should strategically work. approach. Um, uh, you're gonna hijack PT. I know oh, you know. I run with you. I saw your name. I'm like, uh oh. Hold still. <laughs> Warning. You've disavowed a division. This action will mark you as a <laughs> He saw me coming. <laughs> Saw me coming and they couldn't stop me. <laughs> no, Wolfie, why? shoot your friends, who are you going to shoot in the dark zone exactly, you know? Who are you going to shoot? It's going to limit your, your options. Got to keep your options open, guys. Consider shooting your friends. Wolfie knew exactly what was happening. He still let me shoot first. That was awful nice of him. Yeah, I'd run with him sometimes. I mean, that's just what he does. He's hijacked. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. It's my stuff now. NPCs are gonna be mean. Get out of here. Oh, jeez. I think this is my nomad setup. So I'm on a taser turret. I don't see, see this is back when the nomad was still glitchy. You still couldn't see the Nomad Crocs. Oh my god. Croc. Yeah, there's the Nomad Croc. So, like, it would charge up and you had to assume that you had Nomad on. <laughs> you just had to remember that you had it on. <laughs> it, was, it, it could cause you to sweat sometimes if you forgot what the fuck you were running. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that electric green. That's from um, the power plant, I think. There was a time where the only place you could get that, uh, that color scheme was from the power plant. You had to do the mission. It was like a rear drop or something like that. Do the electric slide, buddy. Goodness me. Yeah, we're in full widescreen, by the way. This is back when I used to stream in ultra wide. Um, I don't do it anymore. Because YouTube doesn't allow for uh, end screen an end screen annotations in this resolution, I had to shrink it down to 1080. Sucks. Bunch of schmucks. It was nice playing in this full screen, though. There's a full screen widescreen. Oh my god! I loved, I loved having it like that. Now I play in a windowed mode. Boo hoo! That's why I like having my health high on this build. Um, I could.
could boost the resilience. You look on like it. you need my help. <clears throat> could go pretty crazy with the resilience, but the health on kill is also the other aspect of this build. That's right. Boosting your damage is also important. See? That guy knows what he's talking like about. Nomad. nomad. Health on kill. Stack that shit. That's how you stay in a fight. Kill somebody. It's a lot harder nowadays, though, right? Nomad's kind of tricky if you're going to play it solo. Because you got to build it so glassy if you're going to get kills. But again, if we're going to do the glassy thing, I think I'm going to bring this back, this shield build. And see if we can pop some uh, tops with the sawn off. We'll see what happens. We won't be able to use the taser turret anymore, so this setup won't work, but we'll use the immunizer. Or maybe we will. We'll just run um, adrenaline. Adrenaline, adrenaline. We'll do adrenaline. We'll do... Uh, critical save. We'll do on the move. And the variant will be a five piece that uses the refreshed mask. And we'll switch from, um, let's see, what would we switch out? Maybe adrenaline, we would drop adrenaline for um, combat medic. That's what that would be the move I would make. And then I would switch my taser turret for the immunizer box if we were on a squad yeah I think that's the move I would make now what would be my mods <sighs> I wonder what I would do oh yeah it'd be ballistic shield mods damage that's right it's already decided I'm making this fucking build again you guys fucking decided it for me that was easy for the, la for the last month of this game, I am going to cause havoc in the dark zone by bringing back the impossible. We're bringing back the uh, solo nomad ballistic shield. Fuck it. We have to. This thing was fucking hilarious. Alright. Actually, just because he had said yeah, that, like I think we need to include that in the highlights. Oh. Right? I think it's worth bringing up. What was that? Was that back here? Yeah. Alright, so this is... Six... Six thirty, gotcha. Six thirty. Hijack with solo nomad shield uh, versus Wolfie. All right, that works. I like that. Okay, let's continue. I, I legitimately uh, think that we can get this to work if we play it correctly. Um, because the way these shields work, they didn't have a whole lot of health to begin with anyways. I think they were like 4K electronics uh, tops. Um, the whole point was you were only having enough electronics to proc. Um, ooh, I'm adding this guy. Oh, no. Or don't. Uh, we're trying to add him. But, uh... uh 
he didn't want to join. Now he's getting robbed. Uh, the the idea with these these builds was to uh, have a shield that was strong enough just to get like two shots off with the shotgun, maybe three, right? And I think we can still do that in this meta, even with the paper plate shields that we have, as long as I'm careful, right? I gotta play it careful. And uh, I can still proc competent and get the um, get the max health on the shield, 4K for the shield health. I wouldn't have to roll for uh, skill power anywhere, I don't think. Maybe once, maybe like on the backpack or on the mask or something, I would roll skill power. I would try not to. I would try to have a crit hit chance everywhere I can and crit hit damage or health everywhere else. So it's like a fire, it's like strictly a firepower stamina build. Um, and the shield is just like, like an, consider it like an over shield just in one direction that you can proc over and over again. The primary use of it is to get just the extra 36% damage. Um, and that's, it still does it, by the way. It still does 36% extra damage, as long as you don't run it as a D3. Because that's the one thing that D3 does, is it uh, destroys uh, the extra shield abilities. So we're going to fucking make an attempt. Oh, he's sniping at me. You can see him up here. He's up here. Schmuck. He's gonna have to. He's gonna have to proc rogue if he wants this. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Too late. Damn shame. Energetic. But I gotta throw one as none in there too. That's the only other way this build also works, is because uh, there's a lot of 9k stamina builds now. I need that third shot to kill a lot of people. So, fourth shot even when they have overheals with like Nomad or even whatever, the, when they have a healer with them, they like to overheal. Uh, with a vigorous chest piece or maybe the uh, healer has a uh, overdose. Um, that's the stuff that uh, we'll adjust, figure it out as we go. Once I saw that setup, I knew what he did. Ah, it's a good setup. It's a good setup. Cannon build, too. Um, I double tapped him in the face. You know, and there's, there is a resurgence of glass cannons recently. Uh, you're seeing a couple more of them nowadays. They're uh, they're making their way back into t into squads. Um, I think some of the strikers out there are doing more of like the three K stamina and just going balls to the walls with DPS and just building up a hundred stacks and just melting everything in front of them. Uh, Lone Star, um, Lone Star and Deadeye, they also are doing like 8k and above firearms and just going hard in the paint, just burning everybody to the ground with either Berserk or just the 100% uh, crit hit chance. Uh, And when that when we make the transition to uh, Division Two, I mean everyone's essentially on a glass cannon build. If you if you can get accustomed to glassy builds now, uh, you may have a slight advantage over people in the Division Two. So if you want, go ahead, start building those Dead Eyes, start building those Lone Stars. Uh, if you need a little extra help, build a Nomad and solo on that with uh, glassy stats, like a, uh, a 9 3 uh, 4, so that you're proccing competent and you can run responsive and run up and start hurting people with SMGs, right? 
just maximize that damage with a house and just see how that feels right see how that feels get some health on kill stack the health on kill and see how you feel see how it feels to be glassy but still have that regeneration and see if you can maintain uh, lives get to the point when you're using your nomad to where you're not dying you're killing people and getting the health on kill no nothing good um and preserving your regenerative properties those those revives and if you get to that comfort level where you're con you're consistently killing people instead of dying and you're getting uh, the health on kill instead of dying and that's that's the thing you're relying on uh, I think then you will be a competent player and you should have confidence in what you're doing in the next game right I think that's at that point you should be good to go um, it that's at least that's my opinion with the way uh, Nomad works now because you really don't you really don't want it to rely too heavy on the uh, revives but if you can get used to utilizing the cover getting people to run around it to get at you and uh, shooting around it in the right way uh, you're gonna you're gonna have a good time because there's still a whole lot of cover mechanics that don't utilize you just sitting on the cover in the next game. It just requires you knowing how cover works and how shooting with a line of sight, how line of sight works. Um, get comfortable. Get yourself a nice... Uh, Suppression works weird too, doesn't it? Suppression doesn't work near as good in the next game as it used to in this one. I used to be able to shoot like five, six shots on an NPC and they'd be suppressed. In, uh, in this, in Division 2, it, it felt like I had to really go at them to suppress them. Huh. Like, I could suppress a whole room worth of dudes with, like, one LMG. Yeah, I just got a pure... It is I not wonder. Me. I wonder how much things have changed. Hello. Oh, Pick oh. Up, my dude. Pick him up. Stars. Dude, I hit that dude three times with my son off. That fucking kill for me. What a schmuck. Oh no, Dorothy's running. Dorothy's running. It's Alucard. He's a, he's a goddamn. He's a goddamn vampire. Alucard wouldn't really run, would he? And there, that's an accidental rogue, so nobody's killing him. Scratch that. I am killing him. <laughs> Accidental. Accidental. Chill out. Accidental. <laughs> All these rogues, dude. Everybody getting mad. History lessons, y'all. History re lessons. Ballistic shield got nerfed for a reason. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Copper top. What is this? All right, I think uh, I'm going to wrap things up because I already did this today. I don't really want to do too much more. I'm tired, dude.
Damn, I lived that? Sick. Who did I just fuck? Hold on a second, watch this back. Oh, uh-oh. Hold on. Green proc. Oh, there he goes. Oh my god. That NPC is just ruining my day. Nomad proc. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I made it. <laughs> One man's trash. Rage Racer, one man's trash. Oh my god. Oh, it's Purple People Eater. Cool. What was nice too was because I was using a sawn off. Uh, I had the choice of, um, yeah, definitely. I could equip sawn offs that had determined and predatory if I really wanted to, because they did so, these sawn offs did so much damage. So I could always be regenerating and getting all my T back constantly, or my, you know, my signature. And I could constantly have full health. Like, it was, like, these. These builds were absurd, how much damage you could generate. So I'm going to see. I'm going to see what I can gen uh, make. Maybe I'll do like a um, responsive, determined, uh, and predatory setup. Probably determined in the third slot because I don't think it procs with um, competent uh, talents. Yeah, and that, that also happened. That, that happened then, that happens now, just crashing randomly. But, uh, there you go. That'll be the last one we do for now. So we're up to, what is this? Mind games. We're almost to the end of the page. So maybe what I'll do is I'll go through a page every day. I'll just go as quick as I can and um, we'll do a, I'll do a stream worth where it's just me just grinding through a whole page and I'll have 20 pages worth <laughs> we'll get done with it because some of these pages we'll be able to skip because they were uh, XCOM filled pages uh, when I had one arm I called it my one arm bandit series the only thing I could do is like turn based strategy games at the time, so. Fuck it. Good job, everybody. Where are we on? Page uh, 20? 21? Ah, uh, 21. Fuck. <laughs> Break time, everybody. I will be at work tomorrow. I will stream after I get home. Ah. Uh. I'm sad I couldn't play today. I'm going to see if it was my network or something. But fuck. I guess just everybody's on right now. Everybody and their brother and their cousin. And whatever. At least everybody's getting ready for Division 2 by playing Division 1 again, right? Everyone's stoked. Everyone's happy. <laughs> no, no one is happy. I've, I've talked to like... There's very few people who are stoked right now. There's a lot of unhappy individuals. But uh, I'm stoked at least. And I think that's all that matters. <laughs> a couple of you guys are too. I'm glad. It's good to see you. I will see you again in a short while. Until next time. I want to thank everybody in the chat. Rage Racer, Sky Bass. <laughs> PSI, Stop Shoot Me. AOD Joker, the critical one. And uh, everybody who's lurking in the background, I'm sure you're in there. Let me see. Who is it? 
Active Energy, Apricot Droop Fruit, Commander Root, Host Giveaway, uh, Net Dev, uh, Positive Ebot, The Robot with a Heart, and Slow Cool, Living Life in the Slow Lane. I appreciate all of you. On oh, Punch, hey. Didn't see you there. I appreciate you. I'm going to go on. Get out of here. I will see you tomorrow. Hopefully in the division instead of doing this. But probably a little bit more of this as well. Because I'm going to be panning through my history of division slowly but surely. And eventually we will uh, have a highlight video at the end. And maybe I'll premiere it. Uh, and we'll watch it all together at the end. So uh, I appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out, being buds, even though we couldn't get in the game. <laughs> I have been P2H. You've all been schmucks. And I want to remind each and every one of you to lie, cheat, and steal. Because somebody has to win. And it should be you. Thanks for watching. P2H. Out. Damn it, Poncho, I couldn't get in the game. It sucked. It was terrible. I ended up doing all this watching again. It was fun, though. I had a good time. Next time. Next time I'm getting in the game. Just you wait.